Example 73. A study completed in 2011 looked at the effects of self-control on relationship infidelity. The hypothesis under investigation was that people have a limited reserve of self-control. So when exercising it in one area, for example, when trying to maintain a diet, they might be less able to discipline themselves in other areas. In the study, participants currently involved in an exclusive romantic relationship and depleted of self-control by resisting cookies were more likely to make a coffee date with and disclose their personal phone number to a confederate than their non-depleted counterparts. There was no difference in self-reported likelihood of engaging in either behavior based on condition. Those in the depletion condition self-reported the same likelihood of accepting a coffee date and giving a personal phone number as those not depleted. Yet when tempted in the study, the depleted group did end up cheating at a significantly higher rate than the non-depleted group. The depleted group accepted an invitation to go on a date and gave out their number in 74% of the cases versus only 31% for the not depleted group. Using the 74% from the study as the rate of infidelity, find the mean and standard deviation for the number of people in a committed relationship out of a group of 49 that would commit infidelity while in a depleted state. Would it be unusual for less than 26 people in the group to be unfaithful? Okay, so it's kind of a long paragraph, but very interesting research, right? So what the problem asked us to do is actually three things. It says find the mean and the standard deviation, so that's two of them, and then answer this question if it would be unusual for less than 26 people in the group to be unfaithful. Okay, so let's start with the layout of the problem. I believe it's binomial, right? And the reason why is because there's clearly a fixed number of trials. We're going to be looking at 49 people, right? Secondly, there's going to be either success or failure, either the person is unfaithful or they're not, right? And then we're going to end up having, you know, a constant probability of success in the problem if they're estimating that rate to be 74%. And then finally, the trial should be independent because if one individual randomly chosen is going to cheat, that shouldn't affect the likelihood of another person cheating, assuming that everything is done in a way where they're not able to influence each other's behavior. Okay, so let's conclude that it's a binomial scenario, and if it's a binomial scenario, the mean for the binomial distribution is pretty simple. It's just n times p. The standard deviation is also pretty simple. It's basically the square root of n times p times q. So if we put those together then, what we need to do is figure out what the n is in the problem, what the p is in the problem, and what the q is in the problem. All right, well, let's figure that out. There are 49 people we're going to be looking at, so that's your n. It's your number of trials, right? We'll look at 49 separate cases. The probability or likelihood that they're unfaithful, it says we should use the 74% from the study, so we're going to use 0.74. And then what's left over? Well, it would be 26%, right? So 74% cheated, 26% did not. Remember, these are complementary. It's 1 minus p to get q. Once you have those values, you can plug them in for the mean. The mean here is simply going to be 49 times 0.74. We'll work that out in a minute with our calculator. Let's do the standard deviation next, though. The standard deviation is the square root of 49 times 0.74 times 0.26. Okay, so let's work all those out in our calculator and see what they give us. So looking at it in our calculator, we have 49 times 0.74, or in other words, 74% of 49, we'll get 36.26, 36.26. Let's do the same now for the next piece, the square root. So we're going to do 49, and actually you could just you know take the 36.26, because that's those first two numbers. But just to repeat, it's 49 times 0.74 times 0.26, that's going to be under the square root though, remember, so we'll have a square root of 9.4276. And then once we take the square root, we get that the standard deviation is approximately, you can raise it to the half power, that's the same as taking the square root, you get 3.07. So just for around uh, two decimal places, we'll use 3.07 and then 36.26 is the mean. Okay, so we've answered the first two parts to the problem, right? We've got the mean and we've got the standard deviation. Now let's answer the important question at the end. It said, would it be unusual for less than 26 people in the group to be unfaithful? 
So when something is asked like this, if it's unusual, one way you could do it is by using the z-score approach, right? You could calculate the z-score and see where that z-score lies. If it's like, you know, for example, if the z-score was a negative 2.8, we'd say that's probably unusual because it's below negative 2, right? If it was a high number like, you know, 3.1, we'd say that's unusual because it's above 3 or above positive 2, right? So that's one way to do the problem, calculate the z-score. And we have enough to do that, right? We could take this number 26, we could use the mean and standard deviation in the z-score formula, and that would be a very simple way to do it. However, there's another way we could do it. If we decide that what's usual or what's typical is going to be in this interval, the mean minus 2 standard deviations, the mean plus 2 standard deviations, this would also give us a kind of range of what would be expected. Normally under, say, for example, the bell curve assumption, we would have 95% of the data within those two points because it's two standard deviations away from the mean. If it's empirical rule, we have no less than 75% of the data inside that interval. So it's a pretty good interval to capture what's typical. Anything outside of that, we could label unusual. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. Let's do the mean minus two standard deviations. That would be 36 basically minus two threes, right? So 36 minus six and 36 plus six, essentially. I'm gonna do it with the decimals though intact. So let's do that. Let's do 36.26 and I'm gonna subtract 2 times 3.07 and when I do that I get 30.12 and if I do it again but this time I add two standard deviations to the mean if I add two standard deviations I get 42.4 now we're saying that that interval there should capture no less than 75 percent of the cases so if something's outside of that we'll label it as unusual let's say so in this case would it be unusual for less than 26 people in the group to be unfaithful I would say yes, right, because this lower limit is only 30. 26 is somewhere outside of that, right? So 26 falls over here, so we're going to say yes, that would be an unusual value. So let's go ahead and say yes, it is unusual. So it is unusual because 26 is not in the interval. Period. And that's the end of the problem. So we calculated the mean, we calculated the standard deviation, and we answered the question, is 26 unusual? Go ahead and check your z-score and see what that gives you. If you plug in the mean and standard deviation and this number into your z-score formula, see what it gives you. It's going to give you a z-score that's under negative 2 because this number is below 2 standard deviations from the mean.